Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and in this video I'd like to introduce you to a wild edible mushroom that smells and tastes like garlic. And to many people it smells and tastes better than garlic. And you can use this mushroom in meals as a substitute for garlic. Now I actually don't know of a widely accepted common name for this particular mushroom, so I'm just going to refer to it in this video as the garlic mushroom. So maybe you're familiar with garlic mustard, maybe you've eaten garlic mustard before, it's that aggressive plant in the brassica family. Well meet the garlic mushroom. You can see right behind me there's a nice fruiting of three mushrooms. These are all garlic mushrooms down here. So I'm going to pull one up and show you this mushroom. So this is the mushroom that smells and tastes like garlic and you can use it just like garlic in meals. Its Latin name is Mycetinus scorodonius. So that's what you're probably going to see online or maybe in some more recent field guides. And that species name, Scorodonius, that root word Scorodon is Greek for garlic. So it means the garlicky Mycetinus mushroom. But I think it's just easier in this video to call it the garlic mushroom. Now if you have an older field guide or you look at older websites, you might see this being referred to as Merasmius Scorodonius. But its newest Latin name is Mycetinus Scorodonia. So all species in that genus, Mycetinus, are saprophytic, meaning they typically grow on plant material and they help to break down plant material. And typically these are small to medium sized mushrooms. Now before we go over some key identifying features for the garlic mushroom, I just want to throw it out there that I don't really consider this to be a beginner's mushroom. In my opinion, it's definitely not one of the foolproof four mushrooms like chicken of the woods or hen of the woods or morels or oyster mushrooms or lion's mane or some of those other easily identified mushrooms. This one has white gills, it seemingly grows from the ground, and those aren't mushrooms that are best for beginners. However, once you go over some of these key identifying features, once you see it a few times, once you smell it, once you taste it, then you won't have any trouble identifying this mushroom, discerning between this one and any lookalikes. So let's go over some key identifying features and some lookalikes. So this particular garlic mushroom species, Mycetina scorodonius, is of moderate size, especially for a member of the Mycetinus genus. Its cap is typically an inch wide and its stalk is up to two inches tall and quite thin. When you're looking at the stalk, you'll see that it's lighter near the apex, so it's typically brown to orangish brown near the top. As you get nearer to the bottom, it turns mahogany to reddish brown, and the stem is smooth. This one grows singly, scattered, or gregariously, and it doesn't seem to be too particular for its substrate. So I often see Mycetina scorodonius in eastern hemlock tree forests, either growing from coniferous needles or little branches and twigs. Sometimes you also see it fruiting from dead deciduous leaves and wood, including those from the beech genus, oak genus, maple genus, also from members of the heath family as well. This mushroom is widely distributed throughout Europe, also Western Russia, Scandinavia, Northern Africa, and of course here in Eastern North America. However, it seems to be rare on the North American West Coast. Here in North America, it can be found growing summer through fall, and it deposits a white spore print. Now perhaps the best identifying characteristic for Mycetina scorodonius is the fact that it smells and tastes like garlic. So if it's just raw like this, if you just plucked it off the ground, Oftentimes you will smell that garlicky aroma. However, if you crush it just a little bit, you don't want to obliterate it because it's a smaller mushroom, then you smell it, then it really, really smells like garlic. Also, if you taste it and spit it out, it should taste like garlic. Now, I never recommend tasting and swallowing a wild mushroom, any wild mushroom. But you can safely taste this one and spit it out, and it tastes just like garlic. Now in a couple seconds, I want to show you some other spots where Mycetina scorodonius is growing. I'm probably going to harvest a couple of those to throw in a meal later on today. Before we get into that, I want to talk about some lookalikes so that you don't confuse that garlic mushroom for any other mushroom that's out here. However, you might confuse that garlic mushroom for this garlic mushroom. So what's going on here? Why are there many garlic mushrooms? Well, there are many mushrooms in that Mycetina's genus that smell like garlic, not just Mycetina scorodonius. So this one is also a garlic mushroom that grows in eastern North America. This is Mycetinus olidus, O-L-I-D-U-S. And the way to differentiate this one is that it's much smaller than Mycetinus scorodonius. So right here is Mycetinus scorodonius. Look how much larger that one is compared to this one, Mycetinus olidus. Also, whenever you look at the stem, you will see that the stem of Mycetinus olidus, this garlic mushroom is typically grayish brown, unlike Mycetina scorodonius, which is reddish brown to mahogany brown. 
Also, when you look at the stem, this is a key identifying characteristic. For Mycetinus olidus, it's slightly hairy, kind of hairy. Not quite hairy like my head right here, or hairy like my hair used to be, if you remember those older videos when I had much longer hair. But it's slightly hairy. If you'd use a hand lens or a magnifying glass, you would see these little hairs on this stem right here. Also, Mycetinus olidus tends to grow on deciduous leaves. This one's growing right on the petiole, probably of an oak leaf. Whereas Mycetina scordanius, typically in coniferous forests, sometimes hardwood forests as well. But again, much larger, smooth stem right here, much smaller and slightly hairy stem for Mycetina olidus. Regardless, you can use this as a garlic mushroom because it smells like garlic and it tastes like garlic. So you can use it just like Mycetina scordanius because it is an edible garlic mushroom. One other lookalike to these garlic mushrooms would be Mycetina opacus. This is a mushroom in the same genus. It looks really similar to those other mushrooms. However, it does not smell, nor does it taste like garlic. One key identifying feature for this mushroom, Mycetinus opacus, is the presence of these white stringy rhizomorphs that often dangle down from sticks and twigs. So whenever you pick up a stick or a twig full of Mycetinus opacus, look for these dangling rhizomorphs. Now this is not considered to be an edible mushroom because it just doesn't smell or taste like garlic and it doesn't provide much food value. However, it's not considered to be a toxic mushroom either. It just doesn't provide food value, so I'm not recommending that you eat Mycetinus opacus. Okay, now that you can positively identify the garlic mushroom and two species of garlic mushroom actually, Mycetinus scorodonius and Mycetinus olidus, let's go see if we can find some more. So as you can see, there are a bunch of eastern hemlock trees around me, Suga canadensis. This is a good habitat to find garlic mushrooms, especially the summer months through fall, especially after a good rainfall. So it rained the past couple of days. I have high hopes for finding some under here. And so what I do is just take a look around at the bottom. If I find one, I just keep looking for more. If you look right down here, we see this twig has two. So there's one right there, and there's one right behind it. So that's about an inch and a half to two inches high. Looks like the stems are very smooth, mahogany brown. That leads me to believe that that is the garlic mushroom, Mycetinus scorodonius. And so just because you find two doesn't mean that there are only two. Keep looking around, you might find more. So let's take a look around. There's a lot of partridge berry around here. There's some Solomon seal, some Amanita mushrooms as well. We won't talk about that today, maybe in a future video. But if we take a look around, you can see all these garlic mushrooms here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Some of them look a little dried, but that's okay. You could still harvest those, as long as they don't look moldy. But if I would smell these, they would smell like garlic, especially if you just crush some of the cap tissue. And they're very easy to harvest. You don't need to use a knife. You can just kind of pull them up. They just break off very easily, and I discard the stems when I bring them home anyway, so it doesn't matter if you get some woody tissue on there. Like this one right here, you could just Pluck it, just comes off very, very easily. You just put that down. We can go back over to this one right here. You just pluck it, comes off very, very easily. So Mycetinus scorodonius, one of the garlic mushrooms. Now another good place to look specifically for Mycetinus scorodonius, the garlic mushroom, is grassy areas next to eastern hemlock trees. So to my left is an eastern hemlock tree. And after a good rainfall, I like to look in these areas for these mushrooms. You can see there's a couple popping up. There's one right here, mahogany brown stem. It's about two inches high. Smooth stem as well, so Mycetinus scordonius. And to its right is another one right there. There's actually one right behind. You can see it right there. So it just rained a couple days ago, so no surprise I'm finding some of these during the summer months. And actually all around this grass area, there's a couple more. So I'm going to take a look around and see if I can find some more Mycetinus scordonius. So this is a handful of garlic mushrooms that I harvested in the past 15-20 minutes. Not too bad, this is definitely enough to season any meal. There's about a dozen mushrooms right here. You can harvest more, you can harvest a little less, but about a dozen is good to season a meal for one or two people. Now what I notice here is that some of these mushrooms are much fresher, some are a little older. Regardless, you can use both of those stages. The ones that I harvested in the grass were much more convex, the caps are more convex, a little more peachish in color as well, and the gills were more whitish. The older ones that I found in the woods were a little more shriveled. The caps were a little whitish or yellowish peachish and the gills on the underside are more yellowish. Regardless, you can use both of those. Now besides all these key identifying features, remember, you want to make sure that it smells like garlic and it tastes like garlic. If you don't have both of those characteristics and you probably don't have any garlic mushroom. So smell it 
when you smell it in mass like this, you don't even need to crush them because it really, really smells like garlic. And honestly, the first time I found this mushroom, I smelled it before I saw it. I was just walking and I smelled something garlicky and I looked down and I found all these mushrooms. Also, if you taste this mushroom and spit it out, it should taste like garlic. Now remember, don't taste and swallow wild mushrooms unless you cook them and you know which one it is and you make sure that it is edible. But I don't recommend swallowing any raw mushroom that you find in the woods. So spit this one out after you taste it and it should taste like garlic. So right now I'd like to show you a sample recipe of one way I'd consider cooking garlic mushrooms. And two things to keep in mind with these mushrooms is that number one, you probably want to remove the stems before cooking because the stems can be a bit too fibrous. And number two, you don't want to overcook these mushrooms. They're pretty delicate and they can burn somewhat easily, so I typically add them in at the end of my cooking. So here are some foraged ingredients that I'll saute together. And normally I cook my mushrooms with onions and real garlic, but because I want the garlic flavor of the mycetinous mushrooms to really stand out, I won't be adding any onions or garlic cloves. Starting in the top left and moving clockwise, I have common milkweed flower buds, wild carrot flower stalks that were peeled, if you don't peel them, they'll be too stringy. A bicolor belete cap, a xanthoconium purpureum belete cap, garlic mushrooms that still have their stems intact, cinnabar chanterelles, and a handful of black trumpets. I'll also be using butter, salt, and pepper, and some wood nettle leaves that aren't pictured here. After cutting the beletes into smaller pieces, I'll then remove the stems from the garlic mushrooms and discard them. Next, I'll add some butter to the pan. Then first, I'll add in the ingredients that require the most cooking. In this case, the milkweed flower buds and the bolete mushroom cap. So they'll go in first, and I'll stir all that together to make sure they're evenly coated with the fat. After a few minutes, I'll then add in the wild carrot flower stalks and cinnabar chanterelles. I'll give that a stir and let that all cook for another minute or two. Then I'll add in the black trumpets near the end so that they don't get overcooked. I also mentioned that I had some foraged wood nettle leaves, Laportia canadensis. These are the tender leaves at the top of the stalk and because they were small, they didn't sting me when I harvested these. So I'll just cook them up for a little bit just to soften them up. And lastly, I'll add in the garlic mushrooms. Remember, these are mainly just the caps with most of the stems removed. You could slice these caps into smaller pieces or add them whole. I'll give that a stir and let that cook for only about a minute or two. Then I'll season this little wild foraged meal with a bit of purchased salt and pepper. And that's it. Overall, this whole dish cooked for about eight minutes. It's very simple and you can add garlic mushrooms into any meal that calls for garlic. You don't have to forage all these ingredients that I harvested like the carrot flowering stalks or milkweed. These are just some things that caught my eye outside as I was thinking about what I'd like to do with these garlic mushrooms. And the whole dish turned out great. I could smell the garlicky aroma as I was cooking. I could even smell it in the car as I was bringing them home. And I could definitely taste it in this dish. Honestly, I'd probably add more garlic mushrooms next time. I think I used about 12 in this meal. So as long as you could positively identify garlic mushrooms, you may want to experiment by adding more to your dishes. Now, there's one more fascinating thing I want to mention about the garlic mushroom. And it has to do with the smell and the taste of this mushroom. So what's making this mushroom smell like garlic and taste like garlic? The same compounds that are making the garlic plant and other members of the allium genus smell garlicky. These are sulfur-bearing compounds. And this mushroom contains at least six of those sulfur-bearing compounds, specifically dimethyl disulfide and dimethyl trisulfide. Interestingly, both of those compounds and more are found in allium species. And so that brings the question, which came first, this mushroom or the allium species, wild allium species? Did this mushroom evolve first, then the allium species copied the garlic mushroom? Or was it vice versa? Did the allium species come first and then this one copied the allium species? Who really knows? All I know is that this is a great wild edible mushroom. Just make sure you cook it first and it should smell and taste like garlic. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I hope you learned something about Mycetinus scorodonius, the garlic mushroom. I hope you learned something about Mycetinus olidus, the other garlic mushroom. And I hope you learned something about Mycetinus opacus, the non-garlic mushroom in the Mycetinus genus. Thanks again for watching this video. If you want to stay in touch, feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. Feel free to head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch. Also, you can check me out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, at Learn Your Land. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next video.